Aaron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A Aaron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A Aaron. Oh, A Aaron done messed up by not getting his uh, screen aligned properly. Oh well. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Welcome to SPTV, where every day is one step closer to the complete demise of Scientology. We're talking today about Danny Masterson. Danny Masterson done messed up. If you're watching my channel, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, guy was sentenced. Guy was convicted of um, what words can I use? Thirty seconds into a into a video here. Uh, unanimously convicted of violently uh, attacking. Uh, two fellow Scientologist women. And uh, I, his sentence, I think he was sentenced. I'm getting my dates mixed up here, but I think he was sentenced uh, first week of September. And he has been sitting in jail this entire time. And we've been waiting for him to be transferred to prison. And today, uh, today was the day or last night was the night. Let me show you real quick something here. And then I'm, I'm going to bring on Tommy Scoville to chat about this further. So here's a tweet from Lisa Bartley. And Danny Masterson is now in state prison. He was transferred this morning from Men's Central Jail in L.A. to North Kern State Prison, which is about two and a half hours north of L.A. And uh, here we have a photo. This is actually not a mug shot, by the way, but it is a prison photo. Tommy's going to explain uh, more about that in a moment. And Lisa goes on to say, North Kern State Prison may just be a pit stop for Masterson before he gets transferred to another prison. Kern is where the CDCR processes inmates and classifies them based on their security level. The CDCR website says the classification process could take up to 90 days. All right. So to talk about this further, I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only Captain Tommy Scoville, Captain of the Lifeboat. How's it going, Tommy? What's happening? Uh, let me show everyone. This is Tommy's channel on YouTube, The Lifeboat. You just broke 17,000 subscribers. T what, today or yesterday? Today. Yep, today. Amazing, Tommy. Absolutely kicking butt over there. I'm okay, so what wh what should we know about uh, Danny Boy here and uh, North Well, Kern? she nailed it. Yeah, she nailed it. She's uh, that that uh, facility that he just got sent to North Kern is uh, an intake center. It's all it is. So he's not. This is not his forever home, but it is prison. So he walked in today to heckles, and I mean today they he he met the fellas. They may not be able to so, get at him because these doors are are locked. So even though it's a processing center, it is prison, right? Lisa was correct Absolutely. about that. North Kern, hundred percent. He's now in. Uh, the California federal prison system. Okay. Okay. And, you know, she mentioned that it could take up to 90 days. I think uh, a recent high profile case was Tory Lanes, and I believe it took him about 90 days in, in the processing center before he ended up in his forever home. Um, yep. Is there anything we should understand more about that process? Yeah. And so when he gets there, the, this is going to be one of the first places that he gets, um, or, I mean, this is his first uh, shot at getting an in, uh, a cellmate. So somebody that came through your channel who uh, reached out and said, I found you through AA Ron, uh, some, one of the, the people from that, uh, they actually worked at the jail and they said the entire time he's been in there, he's been alone. So he's never had a cellmate and yeah, he's in the fish tank. Now they're going to, he's, they're going to give him a cellmate. He's going to be locked down 24 hours a day. He'll get out 15 minutes every other day to make phone calls and do the things that he has to do the whole time he's in there. It's just going to be psych evals, um, taking IQ tests, doing uh, physical stuff. They're trying to find out where they can put him uh, with the least chance of him getting killed. And they got to find out how much, you know, how screwed up he is in the head. There are people that can't do time. You know, if, if he was really complaining as much as he was about uh, all of the, the not sleep and stuff, the fish tank's going to kill him because the guys scream around the clock. It's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. It really is going to be. So bad. You used the phrase fish tank. What does that refer to? It's what the it's the it's the same thing as an intake unit, but it's what the inmates call it, right? The the ah. the convicts call it the fish tank because when you first get to prison, you're referred to as fish or fresh fresh fish. So these are guys that have, they're they're not in the system yet. They're getting there uh, to become inmates. So they're going to be doing the whole intake process and uh, and going through all of that with uh, with him. But again, so even though these guys can't get out he had to walk through this tier. And usually when you walk in, they're built with a huge area on the inside and he, you got to walk across that. 
And every single cell in there, I promise you, was letting Danny know that they were aware of the fact that he was there. They were calling him a punk. They were calling him a bitch. They were telling him they, they got store lists for him or they want to have sex with him or they find him attractive. Uh, Davey has a pretty mouth. It's pretty ridiculous. When you first walk in, it's a, it's the fish tank's an ugly place to go. It's really bad. Even if you're solid and have good paperwork and all that. So yeah, he, uh, I don't think he's smirking in that people. I promise you that's that, that picture was, I, I see just, he's resolved. You know, this is, this is life. Boy, oh boy. How, how does the visitation, how are the visitation rules different for jail versus uh, the intake center versus the whatever location he ends that's up a, at finally? That's a good question. Um, so when you're in the, uh, the county jail, visiting takes place through a thick piece of glass and you're given a telephone. Um, and even though you're sitting a foot across from somebody, you're talking to them on the receiver of a telephone and the calls are recorded and there's not much privacy or anything like that. When you visit in a prison, you're actually, you, you can make physical contact with the person. They can come in and give you a hug and a kiss. They can sit down. Some prisons will allow you to sit next to your, um, you know, your, your family. Some will have you sit across from them. But if you have a child, you can pick them up and, you know, play with them and bounce them on your knee and that kind of stuff. However, none of that's going to happen when he's at North Kern. While you're in uh, intake, there's nothing. There's no visiting. There's no, there's no anything. You know, you're just... It's the fish tanks, the hard, really, as far as being in prison, it's the hardest time you're going to do because you're locked down, you know, 24 hours a day. So if the guy you're living with is, is, is not a nice person, it really becomes a very long day. You know, I get it. <clears throat> you know, on the Tory Lanes comparison that I made, I'm realizing I can't remember if I was told he spent three weeks in the processing center or if it was three months. I'm not sure if it really matters. But um, but in your opinion, if you're in Danny's shoes, you're wanting to get out of there as quickly as possible and get to your final place? Yeah, absolutely. But it, being Danny, every time he figures out that where he's at right now, he's not dead, he's probably going to really not want to get to the next phase. You follow what I'm saying? Like as bad as county jail was, he was alone and he was in a cell. So I would imagine that he's been dreading this move because now there's no more hiding the county jail had a real vested interest in making sure that he doesn't get hurt on their watch the 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 prison is not going to be as concerned about that you know what i mean people you kind of assume that if somebody goes to prison and with that kind of paperwork that inmates can hurt him there's not much you can do about that in county jail you're protected you're expected to protect somebody because he's technically not guilty until right until he's guilty and then yeah, he's, this is, I, I honestly, it almost, last night I was thinking about it and uh, it almost keeps me up and I hate the guy. Like, I don't like the guy, but I'm telling you the, the, the level of stress that he's going to be going through right now is just otherworldly. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't help but wonder a little bit about um, the fact that he's going through a divorce with Bijou, uh, that Bijou is all over Instagram right now in the Bahamas, Bahamas. Um, with the that. Baldwins. Um, getting a little freaky, getting a little crazy. And the only reason it even comes to my mind is because uh, Jada Pinkett Smith in her most recent disastrous press tour had been uh, telling this whole story about um, Tupac Shakur and how he wanted to marry Jada just while he was in prison so that he had someone to do time with. And, and this, that's honestly was some, uh, you know, listening to Jada tell those stories was just some of the first times I'd, I'd ever heard anyone mention the fact that to someone on the inside, it could actually be important to have someone that they're married to on the outside, even if it doesn't mean anything. Um, and, and that for Danny, you know, Danny's family is very, very tight. Uh, uh, just remove Bijou from the equation. The Danny, the Masterson right. family is an extremely, extremely tight family. And I just wonder um, how, how this whole going through a divorce and, and Bijou really making it clear that she doesn't really give a damn about any of this at this point. She's moved on how that might be impacting um, his the, state of mind. And you mentioned he's going to have to deal with therapists at this point in the process. So you'd have to imagine there's an awful hard, lot to work with there. Well, and hardcore convicts. I mean, you meet guys that do five or six sentences over the course of their life, right? They call it doing the uh, life on the installment plan. But guys that have been through three and four of these, when they when they get arrested, they cut every single tie they got to the street as fast as they can because you'll go insane Right. And I promise you, the guys in there are telling him, hey, you know, your old lady's in the Bahamas. I, I promise you, like you can't imagine the level of vicious. Um, one of the things I, I tell the story a lot, but we had a guy that came in and uh, the guy was missing an arm. 
you know, and um, he came in and, you know, someone said, what happened to your arm? And he started telling the story or whatever. The guy's like, well, you're lefty, right? Like from here on out, your name is lefty, right? The guy's missing his left arm. And he just looked at everyone and was like, oh, okay. Like there's nowhere else in the world where if somebody had a deformity, you would instantly turn it into a nickname. Prison is a kind of mean and just, I mean, it's the cruelest place on earth. I've never, never, uh, there's no way to do justice to tell you just how awful and uh, and full of hate it is. And they've been waiting on this cat. Like uh, they are waiting on this cat. So yeah, I can't, I can't imagine. And like I said, I got somebody from, uh, you know, that called and said, today's the day he's getting transported. I got that call at, at like 3.30 or something. I got an email that said his phone's been turned off, which as a convict will tell you when you go to use your phone or whatever. So whoever was working at the jail has been dialing his number every day to see if it's so, but I was too afraid to put, to, to tell anybody, cause I don't know if this person really works at the jail for all I know, this person is nobody, but, uh, but I got an email that said today was the day he was getting, uh, getting shipped. And I started thinking about it right then. This is literally, uh, this is a nightmare of levels that you, you just cannot wrap your brain around every single person in there wants to hurt him. I mean, there's nobody there that doesn't want that dude hurt. It's just awful. Incredible. I have, I know people who do. I absolutely know people who do I have a bunch of connections in the I saw I saw a question in the California system. I know a bunch of people in the California system. The uh, well, I'll tell you anyway. If there's anyone watching who happens to work at the uh, what did Lisa call it the North uh, North Kern State Prison, or if there's correct. anyone watching who works in the system and knows where Danny's going to be transferred to, and uh, you wouldn't mind sharing that information with me, you can reach me at Growing Up in Scientology at gmail.com. They probably won't sure. know for about a month, Aaron, uh, the, mm. this process, it's not, it's not like a foregone conclusion. They really are going to be figuring out where he's going to go. And a great deal of that is going to depend on how he answers all the questions that they're going to ask him. Right. They, they really sit down and try to figure out if you can do time. There are people that it, like, if you're not cut out for it, it's going to change how and where they put him. So he's a, he's, and if he wants the medication that he needs to sleep, he's only getting it from psych. It's got to be very interesting. Uh, I know we've talked about this a lot, but this question does come up all the time. Will they put him into protective custody? Absolutely. He's going into protective custody. There's no, I don't think he has an option. If he did, he's begging for that option. But I don't think he has an option. But you have to understand something. Protective custody. I don't want you to believe that protective custody means that they take him and they put him in a room and guys stand out in front of that room like this and make sure that nothing happens to him. Protective custody just means that he doesn't get put into general population. So if you're a shot caller and you're stabbing people and killing people and you get into an argument with your first in command and somehow you're shipped off that yard and you're no longer able to walk the yard, you're going into protective custody. So on Monday, you're a killer. And on Tuesday, you're in with guys that have bad sex cases. That's how it works. Uh -huh. So yeah, you're in protective custody, but so is every person in the prison who was in a gang and then had to leave the gang. They're all in protective custody, right? They were gangbangers on Monday and on Friday they're in PC. So don't start thinking PC means, I mean, we get this thing in our head that people talk about, you know, well, PC, I never did PC time, but I watched stone cold killers that I did time with get sent to PC because of an argument where they got stabbed and now the gang wants them. They're still a killer. You know, they just okay, get, so him being know. put into protective custody has nothing to do with like whether he like he's not uh, that doesn't contradict what you said about he's going to have a cellmate. No, no, he's going to have a cellmate. He's absolutely going to have a cellmate. Um, and no, no, I mean, protective custody. What protective custody is, is this guys who, who have an enemy in the system so badly that they're going to get hurt if they're put into general population. They get sent to some place where they're not in general population. But all the guys that got in trouble, these were these were gang members and drug dealers and hit men, right? When they get in trouble and they can't walk a yard because there are gangs that want to kill them, they get sent to protective custody, special needs yards with guys like Danny. They they don't change. You know, on Monday they don't go, oh, I no longer care about people that uh, you know that victimize women. That that right. you know, protective custody doesn't mean what people think it means. He's going to be in protective custody. Doesn't mean he's going to be safe. Rotten Ralph asks, wasn't Derek Chauvin in protective custody? Not only was Derek Chauvin in protective custody, he was in the protective custody. He was on a yard that had 380 inmates, and that yard was built for a, uh, 1,080. So he he was on a yard where they shut units down so that all of the cops that they did have could protect people like him. And he got stabbed 22 times in the neck. 
Wow. If they're gonna, if they go. want to get you, they're gonna get you. And he was on super protective. He was on what's called the cheese factory, right? That's not even, that's not even the uh, the snitch yard. That is the ultimate. That's the famous snitch yard, the cheese factory. They don't have that in the state though. He's just going to protective custody. Mindy Zelensky asks, why would he have a phone? Don't get that. He doesn't have a phone. Did, I, did someone say he had a he would So have it's a not that he had a phone. It's that he still had phone service turned on in his name. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. When you make a call on the, uh, when you, when you, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. When you go to make a, a phone call home and you're an inmate, you're waiting to get shipped. You go to make a phone call and you dial the number and it says, this number has been turned off per the, uh, the jail system. You know, you're getting shipped. They don't want you to make a call and go, hey, they're shipping me today. Have everybody oh. ready. As crazy as it sounds, right? So uh, we have a guy uh, apparently on the inside who's been checking every morning, just dialing his phone number to see if it works. That's where. And he said, hey, his phone's been turned off. He's he's getting shipped. I got that email at three thirty, but I didn't trust it because I don't know this person. Oh, it's just an email. I get it. That's but that's what. Yeah. So if you've ever done time, like I always knew, <clears> and then I would, you know, you, you usually you can get a message out. No one's gonna break you out in the, you know, this isn't Vin Diesel stuff, but. Matt Martinez says North Kern State Prison has had two major stabbings in the last week. Um, well, there you go. This is prison, people. You know, this is this is prison. And uh, in, in, intake is bad. Intake is dangerous because there's no structure, right? Intake, the which is where he is, the fish tank. There's no shot caller there because everybody that's there is coming through, staying 30 days to 90 oh. days, depending on how long it takes them. And every individual is different. If you act like a jackass, they'll throw you in for two weeks before they pull you back out, which is why they give you the 45 to 90 day time frame. Interesting. But, and so when you say there's no structure, you're talking about the internal inmate right, structure no, as far as right. The, there's no shot caller. There's no, yeah. uh, there's no rep. There's none of that. So anything goes, there's nobody to answer to. And that's, right, that's right. scary stuff. Russ Hampton says he's got three prisons close to him, CCI, CMC, oh, CCI, CMC, and another one. Tommy is right. Danny is alone right now. The only book you get is a Bible, a roll of toilet paper, and sheets. That's it. Do they give everyone a Bible? If you if you ask for a religious text, you can get a Bible. You could get a Quran. You could get, you could get the uh, Satanic Bible if you want one. Um, you think I've they'll give Danny a, di anybody... a Dianetics book? I don't know if I've never heard anybody asking for Dianetics. I've seen Dianetics on the book cart a bunch of times, but I've never, I've never heard anybody ask for it as a religious text. I've always seen it just on the book cart. Really? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. We got some of these here. Carrie asks, Aaron, I saw your live with Marilyn Honig last night and you mentioned not going to college for not, I didn't go to high school guys. Uh, do ex Scientologists get GEDs when they escape? How do escapees handle education? Uh, I think everyone does it differently. Um, I never got a GED. I never got a diploma. Um, my earliest employment was going to a, a temp, a, a temp employment agency. And you just tell them that you have a high school diploma. Nobody really cares. Uh, and then once you have enough of a work history, nobody really cares where you went to school, in my opinion, in my experience. But everyone's experience is a, a little differently on that one. Okay, Rich Q, I see yours there, but I'm not going to bring that up because it's not entirely YouTube friendly. Um, <laughs> it's the spirit. Okay. All it's right. got this something is, to do uh, with uh, him and a guy named Bubba. This one's borderline. Which will he drop first, his body or his trousers? Oh, spicy. Uh, interesting. Woo. You know, that is that is an out. As crazy as it is, that is, there is a very popular thing going on these days with people who have really bad paperwork and they decide that they would like to be a different gender. That's, that's real talk. That happens a lot these days. It's becoming an epidemic in the federal system, an epidemic. All of the people who are going, because all of a sudden you're not, you're off the line. No one's going to beat up somebody like who is um, in the process of uh, transferring because it becomes a hate crime. Like you can beat up any inmate in there, but if you beat up somebody who is in the process of going through the transfer from male to female, oh, the transition. Um, it becomes a hate crime. You're looking at 20 years. So a lot of guys that really want to protect themselves walk in the front door and decide that's better than death. Wow. 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 Tough, tough okay. To what's this rip, one? I guess the carousel delirium, Tommy and I can't wait to talk about the Epstein <laughs> of hip hop. The oh, yeah. new crazy downfall of an empire and decades of abuse. Love you, A.A. Run. You're a beautiful soul. Who is the Epstein of hip hop? Um, P. Diddy. Oh, for there's real? A lot of there's a lot of really really ugly stuff. Uh, oh, is this based research. on the the filing from just last month? 
there's a lot of really ugly stuff yeah coming out did where wow. do you see all of the diddy stuff there's some really ugly stuff coming out very wow. interesting stuff mama dukes how long does it take for the input process to be completed uh mama dukes if, i think we covered that a few weeks ago smoking a few months. through it 45 days yeah. if you smoke okay. through it you do everything right your group never gets busted back because if you you go into certain things with nine to ten other guys so if two dudes get in a fist fight you're screwed everybody's getting locked down it's going to be 14 more days before you can go back and try that again. So if everything goes good and it never does 45 days and you are now eligible to be shipped, doesn't mean you'll get shipped that day. It's just like what he was doing at the County jail, but normally within a week of you finishing intake, they will ship you to your forever home. So okay. that's how that works. All right. Um, Anonymous, love that one. Uh, they should <laughs> take so new cool. inmate pictures about once a year. You should be able to track his experience and time each year by looking um, up his photo. I actually have a question about this. <clears throat> Aren't there circumstances where photos do get retaken? All the time. All the time. If you lose your uh, prison ID, if you shave off your beard, um, there, there are so many different reasons that you can get. Uh, and I did, let's see, the last, my sentence um, for the, the gun stuff was uh, like just under 10 years on the last sentence, right? And on that sentence, I probably went through nine IDs. You go through a lot of them. You go to New Yards and they say, we don't, we don't take our photos that way, right? So you're like, okay, whatever. And you get a new one. And they wear out. They're really, really, really cheap. I don't know if I got one here. But they're really, really cheap, um, like a credit card thing that comes out of a printer, and they wear off very quickly. So you're always having to get them redone. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I saw another one here. Speaking to what you said, Kim Wexler's ponytail says there is a British <laughs> prisoner who identifies as a baby, wears adult nappies, and all of his food gets blended. Is that right? Yikes. Or I didn't wow. take my sentence out. I'll tell you what, I screwed mine up. I identified as a punching bag, <laughs> right? For prison guards. I was doing something wrong. Yeah, next oh. time. <laughs> <Living> <clears throat> oh, that's Alicia awful. Medley says, I emailed you an age progression mugshot of what he will look like when he gets out. Who is oh, that? I, I see. She. Oh, my God. He looks kind of like Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then he looks like the emperor from from uh star wars it's disturbing Palpatine. i'll forward this email yeah 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 Palpatine. i'm i'm looking at it now alicia I'll, I'll send it to you tommy it's disturbing uh okay what is this ed s says charlie adelson's phone calls are all over youtube is it possible to get danny masterson's phone calls do you know who charlie char uh, who the charlie guy is yeah i uh it's a case that's uh very popular in true crime right now Charlie Adelson's stuff is unique for how it got leaked. I don't know that we're going to see that with what happened with Danny. The, the way the Adelson tapes got out was different. More, we got lucky. I don't think that's going to happen with, but, but we might, that would be great. It would be interesting to hear what he had to say, hmm. but I don't think we're going to get it. The Adelson's also talked for six hours a day on average. And when you crank out that much stuff, people are going to, they were literally putting out eight hours of, uh, of jail calls a day. I don't think Danny's, uh, Danny's been that, uh, you know, proactive, but. Prolific, wow. I should say. Okay, so Mary's asking, do you think Danny is enough of a coward that he cannot face 30 years and will try to end his life? Uh, I got to tell you, I personally believe that Danny's going to end up doing 20 years based on California's elderly compassion, whatever it's called. You might know better than I what it's called. Yeah. I forget. Um, I, I've heard different opinions on this subject. I think Danny's a very proud person. Uh, I think he's not willing to accept defeat or give up just personally. I, I just, uh, very extremely stubborn, um, which is not, a, you know, not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I, I don't see him. I mean, look, if the guy's getting shanked every 12 months or, or whatever, yeah. I mean, who knows it may, let's say, put it this way. It may not be up to him. Yes. But, yeah, uh, the it's a hard one. I don't know. I have no idea what the cat's made of. Like you would be a better person to, uh, to answer that. I have no idea. Um, what, what, uh, you know, Danny, I, I can tell you this. If I were in Danny's shoes, I'd be terrified. Right. You, and I'm, I'm your size, right? We're, we're a lot bigger than that. Kid, right. This is not a big dude. 
and you hear people all the time go, you know what? Size doesn't really matter, you know? And, and it doesn't, I guess, in the real world. In prison, it matters a crap load. It really does. And if you're smaller, they just kind of treat you differently. And he just doesn't have anything going for him on this. In this, there's, I, I can't see him getting through it. But I'm just basing that on the life that he lived. I mean, I lived a pretty spoiled life before I went to prison. But I was a big dude and I had a lot of street smarts. I just don't, I don't know. We'll have to see. But yeah. <clears throat> and you did 10 <laughs> years, right? I did uh, 13 years altogether, but I did, um, yeah, 10 on one on one sentence, uh, the last sentence. But I did, uh, or nine on the last sentence. I did 13 altogether, just uh, just about nine on the last one. Yeah. Wow. I had three different sentences. Okay, Mur P has a question. Are you familiar with the end of Sentence YouTube channel? His early videos tell his story of being a felon in Florida. That would be a phenomenal collaboration with you. Um I'm not sure if the, the collaboration suggestion is for me or for you, but have you ever heard of this channel? I have not. I have not. Believe it or not, I don't do a lot of prison stuff. <laughs> I really don't. I do, you know, if it comes up for, uh, you know, uh, for something like this, the Danny Masterson thing, I just got, I got really involved in because uh, A.A. Ron in, introduced me to some really incredible people, for real, that just, you'll never look at this thing again, I promise, the same way, you know? Uh the, the heroes that took this dude down would uh, would change your life if you met him for a short period of time. And I've been blessed and, you know, they interact with me. I'm blown away, but they, you know, they actually interact with me and they're, uh, they're pretty incredible people. It's, uh, it's amazing to see that. Uh, and I think that that's going to be the punch that probably does the most damage, you know, like you were talking about in your video with uh, the discovery that they're going to have to do on their arbitration stuff. It all keeps coming down from Jane Doe, right? The Jane Doe's are killing. They're really doing a lot of damage. It's beautiful stuff. Absolutely. Uh, April Conlon has a question. I worked for a department of correction in it. Our offenders get transferred from one facility to another to take different programs is the same true in California. Oh, shoot. What is, what do you think it means here? Um, I assume it literally means it. There's a lot of, uh, like, I'm, I'm assuming it's inter internet stuff. I could be wrong. Uh, <clears throat> I, here's the thing. Um, I don't know is the right answer to that. I have no idea uh, how much of that is going on. My guess would be that um, there's probably some transferring that goes along for programs. But my experience in, in the time that I did is they talk a lot about programs, but there really aren't any. You know, I mean, like um, we, we read all the stuff. You know, I, I went to what's called the special management unit, the SMU, and um, I got a booklet that my wife mailed in and said, this is what I expect you to sign up for when you're in this. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like all of these courses I could be taking. I'm like, none of this exists. She's like, I pulled this off of the federal website. I'm like, well, it's, it's a lie. You know, none of it exists. Now it may happen where you're at. I don't know about California, but I don't see Danny getting a shot at a lot of programs. Right. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see him doing a lot of programs. Yeah. So, um, I know IT means information technology. It just seemed like it might have been a typo for a state. That's all. Um, you know, but, that's I okay. but and you also wouldn't pick up a bunch of a bunch of uh, convicts, you know, surfing the uh, the web. But the uh, <laughs> most of them have a really big. <clears throat> most of them have a really big, like an the annex building that has nothing to do with the inmates, which has a crap load of employees in it that are dealing with real stuff. They try to keep them away from uh, the animals, but. Um, okay, well, could be wrong too. that's a question for you. What about if he is deemed not able to handle prison during intake? You mentioned then something. They're just like going to send him to a different one is what they're going to do. You're, you're not going to get out of going to prison, but where they decide to put you is going to be based on that. And if they decide that you can't do time, then what happens is uh, there are yards where um, you're put with um, other individuals who struggle doing time. And they tend to be um, see, I can only think of the inmate words for them and none of them are nice, but they're, they're, they're mental uh, facilities for inmates. And a lot of times guys try to work the mental uh, thing because they think it's going to get them easier time. It is the worst time on earth. If, if uh, I honestly, he hopes that that doesn't happen to him because then you're in there with guys who are violent as hell and who like to throw feces and, you know, just, it gets really, and it gets so animalistic at the, uh, when you get into the mental uh, stuff in prison, it gets so over the top. It's hard to wrap your brain around, but wow. You know, hopefully, hopefully he can at least, uh, Oh, I don't know. 
No, nothing. There's nothing in this guy's future that isn't awful. Yeah. There's no hope. Okay. Gina wants to know, what is the status of Danny's appeal? Has it been filed? Gina, my Isn't understanding that is that it, it was that Did, is it, has it been filed? My understanding is that it has been filed. Um, it's something that needs to be obtained by showing up in person. Uh, I do expect to have my hands on it pretty soon. And um, it's, it's a Hail Mary long shot. Like there's, well, and there's they no took it to the to wire. Play. Right. They took it to the wire. They filed it on the last day, which I was going to say seems... a day before. A day, yeah. And that that's not normal. You know that? Like I, in my experience, like I have filed appeals on, on cases and my attorneys never, I mean, we, we had our appeal. Normally you kind of just assume that things aren't going to go well. And they're working on the appeal before, you know, when the judge says, you know, the appeal needs to be done in excellence, they're already dropping it. You know, they're usually right. ready to go. I was really surprised that, you know, when, when two days beforehand that hadn't been filed, I thought that was crazy, but. All right. Kathy is asking, is state prison different from federal prison? Now she might've been asking Russ in the chat, but just, can you give us okay. your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, um, the, every state prison is different dramatically than federal prison. Right. Uh, but each one you have to judge basically by, by state and some are really soft. There are prison, uh, there are states that don't have dangerous prison systems. They just run things very differently. California is not one of them. California is the probably the most violent prison system in the U.S. Texas is pretty bad too, but but either or, and they're they set they set the rules for every white guy in the uh, in the country in terms of what they do at every other prison. That's federal, state, that's all of it. So they're the ones that came up with the rules about how they treat people like Danny. It was it right. was created there. He's he picked the worst state in the union to do what he did. There's no other way to say it. All right, Rachel has a question. What if he refuses his psych evals? He he that is absolutely a uh, an, an option for him. They make your life really crappy. You know, they make your life really crappy. They he could get put into uh into the shoe until he decides to cooperate um and you can end up doing a whole lot of time uh in the shoe. You know, that way. I, if he, but according to everything that I've uh, that I've heard, and even the people that were uh, emailing me, he takes a bunch of stuff to sleep. He's not getting any of that stuff. They're going to give him nothing in the uh, prison system if he will not talk to psych. You, that's the right. only way you get those meds. So he's going to be talking to psych if he wants to go to sleep. Extra bebop wants to know: Are they going to make him shave his head? No, no. You know, not for, not for a prison ID or anything like that. They don't do any of that anymore. They used to. I actually went to a prison that made you shave your face and, and head for the uh, ID, but none of them do that anymore. Okay. That got lit again. Jennifer Lemke says, more programs in state uh, prison than federal prison, especially depending on the state that you're in. My ex is a correctional officer. He was just a regular one. Now is a CO3 that helps inmates with programs. It's all BS. What's a CO3? Um, yeah, it's, you're, you're no longer, uh, in there working with the guys wrestling people to the ground. Now you're, uh, you're working, um, you're putting on a tie and you work with guys to help them with re-entry or you help guys. They usually have three positions, at least in the fed system, there are three positions, uh, in every unit that work with people who are not COs. They still are called corrections officers, but one is a caseworker, one is a counselor, uh, and then one just facilitates anything that if you have any legal problems that pop up over the course of the time that you're in prison, which actually happens a lot, you know, or a, a wife divorces you or something like that happens. That's just the liaison that handles that. But they're higher paid is what they are. They're better paid. Got it. Which is good. Pop is paper. Danny clocking out would be admitting guilt. I doubt he would do that by choice. Yeah, uh, that's it's a good it's it's a good point. And I wonder if everybody would see it that way. Um, you know, in some cases, it depends on what it is you are choosing to live for. Is he living for the opportunity of being able to be with his family in 20 years? Um, is he, but if he's, if, 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 if the only thing he's been living for is that he's this, uh, you know, marketable entertainment industry figure. And now he's got to deal with the fact that no matter what, even if he survives the next 20 years, even if he does 30, even if he comes out in 10, he's done. He'll never work again. No. And uh, I, I just don't know how important that was to him. Is family enough? You know, is family enough? If for him, if family and, is enough, then I would expect him to try to do the time. And and doesn't and if he drops that body, right? Doesn't he believe that just 
boom, he's back, right? He's just going to endure another one. He's 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 the real deal, right, Aaron? I mean, everyone, all Scientologists believe that, but but do they believe it enough? You know, right? Exactly. That's <laughs> like, where the that's like, where the rubber beats the road, right there. <laughs> like if his brother Jordan was like Danny, you know, uh, I I don't know if Jordan's married or anything, but if, if let's say Jordan got married, he's like Danny, we're having a baby. It might be time. Just drop the body. I'll get you know, you'll pop into our little baby body, uh, our little baby's body. We'll raise you as a lap of you know in the lap of luxury will get you back on the bridge i mean it sounds crazy guys and i can't but but the, it is what scientologists believe the question is do they believe it enough to act on it you know i don't know I would well, you remember the paper know. we were looking at when we were uh, when i was in la they uh, i think it was laura that had the paper and there were people running ads in the paper you know i'm getting ready i'm, I'm at that age you know and they were looking for people who's the who facebook, babies that they can in jump face, into facebook in Facebook groups, they were advertising for um, thetans of, uh, uh, you know, uh, OT Scientologist, OT Scientologists who were getting ready to drop the body, who want, Holy they would want to have them pick up their baby's body. <laughs> uh, okay. Escaping the cultiverse, eh? Uh, question. Do you think Danny will survive better due to his celebrity status? I know you've answered this, but let's just, let's just no. take this one up. No, what what his celebrity status has done. If he was if he was just a criminal, right? If he was if he was a bank robber, or if he was, you know, if you're if you commit crimes and you're and you're famous, that's great. You get treated well when you go to prison. That's not what he did, right? He's a piece of crap, right? He he committed the second worst offense that you can do, and then go to prison. So no, all it all it has done is made it so that every person in there knows who he is. He can never fly under the radar. Definitely not a plus where he's going. Yeah. All bad. Oh, good. Um, Jean Marlowe asks, Aaron, do you know what happened to the missing gun? Uh, the judge has authorized the district attorney to draw up search warrants uh, for the addresses where, mm, where, where, where Danny, it would be where he was living, probably for his mother's place, maybe for his brother's place, to find the missing weapon that the court has determined was never turned in. I mean, 10 of his weapons were never turned in. But even after D Danny's attorney represented that they were all turned in, one was still missing, and it just happens to be the gun that he used in the commission of the crime against Jane Doe 1. Yeah. And uh, something tells me he's got his little trophy stashed away somewhere, is my guess. But thanks to his, little, his shenanigans on this, some of his family members are going to have their houses raided, is what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I want to tell you something. So the, the last time I went to prison, I went for guns and uh, I had one gun. It's a small little 32 that was missing from all of the uh, other guns. And you would have thought that it was an atomic bomb. I mean, they, what they did to get this gun back, like that they literally, yeah, they searched everybody I knew. They hit every house I knew just on the outside chance that I might have. Uh, yeah, they were on it. They, and they did? Found it. Yeah, they they searched they searched a family member's house. They served a search warrant on a girl that I had dated twice, and I don't mean like over. I I went on two dates with this girl, and they searched her house uh, because during that time they could verify that my car had been uh, been near there. Yeah, they you would not believe, and it was one gun. I mean, I my case had a lot of weapons on it, and this was just one little thirty two and in a, in from a 1942 Walther PPK. But they lost their mind to find that gun, <laughs> and they did. Wow. Like they, they take that stuff really seriously because God, this is their theory, Aaron. If God forbid that gun now gets out into the world and is used in the commission of a felony, do you have any idea how bad everybody looks? Like, wait a second. You had this dude arrested and you didn't get this gun. And then this gun went out and did this. That's that's the big fear. And it happens. This happens a lot. And when it does, people lose their jobs. You know, no one wants to, to reelect the uh, prosecutor that let that gun get wow. out. Wow. 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 Serge Del Mar in the chat. Right. One kid that grew up in Scientology, Danny Masterson, and became a protected self-admitted felon. And uh, and they also need to go find their missing spines after they find the missing gun. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Serge. Uh, Mur is back with another one here. The end of sentence channel has nearly a million subscribers. Uh, not a question really, but just wanted to catch your attention. Either of you would be great in a collaboration. You know, I've only seen it. I've only come across a couple or maybe two or three channels um, uh, of, of the ones 
like the ones you're describing here. So I'll have to check it out. It might be that I actually already am familiar with this channel, but I just didn't remember the name of it. Um, but I'll check it out, Mar. I will. Thank you for that. Marilyn yeah. Honig in the chat. Um, maybe Danny will be the first person to come back with Total Recall. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe Danny can set the precedent that L. Ron Hubbard failed to set. I'm a little just... surprised that we haven't seen him. Right. I thought maybe he was up in the hills working on uh working on the uh the higher OT levels. I mean maybe he showed up, right? Right. He should be how old yeah. now? If uh he 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 dropped the body in 84, 86. Don't he was he was born in 1911. So uh if it was 2011, 21, 12, is that 112? Be 112, 113, something like that. There you go. Uh Brenda Martin, both you love both you and Tommy. God bless the Jane Dose. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Good Absolutely. Stuff. Will Gunn, is the Scientologist thought of dropping your body scary, neutral? Does it feel like failure or an opportunity in some way? It, it really, uh, you're going to get different answers on this from different former Scientologists. The idea of dropping your body is supposed to be that you are causatively departing your body, you know, and I, it's not like L. Ron Hubbard ever, he never dedicated a lot of words to discussing the subject. It's not like there's a procedure or a process or you, you, you know, there's no, like you're not trained on how to drop the body or anything. <laughs> um, but it's a phrase that also just reflects the belief that Scientologists have that you are not your body. So they won't say John died because John didn't die. John's body died. And so I don't know. Saying John's body died sounds a little weird, but I guess saying John dropped the body also sounds weird. But uh, <laughs> because I spent so much time in Scientology, it sounds normal to me. Uh, but but I like this question of would it be is it would it be seen as a failure or as an opportunity? And so I think this is the most fascinating subject in all of uh, in everything you talk about. To me, this honestly. Yeah. When you brought it up in LA the first time, you remember me being like, "Oh wait, whoa!" Like that really. Uh, it's when you find well, out if you're a believer, right? That's really when that's you find, when you out, find if out if you're a believer. Well, I, I haven't really thought about this before, and I'm, I'm I'm thinking about it right now, just thinking on your question. And I can see how somebody could convince themselves it would be failure, and I can see how somebody could convince themselves. What are you talking about? This is an opportunity. Like I could see if someone like Danny in Danny's position truly believed and was truly dedicated and was like, why should I let them win? by keeping me locked up in here for the next 20 to 30 years when I could drop the body, pick up a new body. And in 12 years or, or you know, in 10 years, I'm back on course, baby. That's you it. Know? Before, before my years, sentence is over, I could be making kid commercials again. I could be back right? on a TV show in, in a, in a few years, right. As a little baby or something. So, I mean, it really does. It would, it really does depend on just how much you believe. And I question whether anybody believes enough. And there are believers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Serge says, one down, how many more to go? Demand <laughs> accountability. Absolutely. And uh, Ken's channel. Soon Danny's going to have total recall over and over. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Uh he well, is well, going well, to Groundhog well. Day. I promise you that. That's at, to talk to anybody that's done time. It's Groundhog Day. Only his is going to be the worst Groundhog Day ever. But the Free Zenu change. Project has an interesting question for you, Tommy. How would the guards think about Danny? Do they believe the conviction? How do they act? They believe he's guilty. There is the guards believe he's guilty. I assure you. Uh, they there's never been. I, I don't think there's ever been a case, honestly, where they where they defer to the convict and believe that he's innocent. Even if there's, and there have been cases where there's a lot of reasonable doubt or whatever. No, I absolutely guarantee you that, uh, that they think he's guilty. Yeah, I promise you. Uh, check this out. This is worth addressing. On Hada on Fire, Oh No Nora was declared a past life clear. So um, thank you for the, the comment here. Being, de uh, being a attesting to past life clear in Scientology, uh, I guess, again, I haven't thought about this before. I guess in some ways that is Scientology acknowledging that this person has come back. Um, it's, yeah, it is I want him to it is a little different say, though. Hey, remember me? That's what I want. Hey, yes. it's, it's Lafayette. 
You know, what, I mean? you know what? Get out the cigars. This is an excellent thing for me to do a chat with Nora about. I've actually never picked anyone's brain who attested to past life clear to ask them just how much detail they had to go into in their auditing sessions before they were allowed to attest to past life clear. Any of you former Scientologists out there who attested to past life clear and want to do a chat with me about how exactly that went down, uh, email me at growing up in Scientology at gmail.com. This is a fascinating subject that has never even occurred to me. Um, this is where to I put on display your stuff too. You know that right? <laughs> no, for real. This is, this is this is where I geek out on the on the stuff I really do. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping yeah. you get her on quick. I'm hoping you get her on really quick. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've been going for 45 minutes, and um, I've been keeping my eye on the live chat for questions, but we've covered uh, the vast majority of them. So hey, how about we leave it there? What's that? Rabbits in the uh, rabbits in the chat. Rabbit is. I keep seeing people responding to Rabbit, but I don't see her. Well, I see her responding to yeah. people. Oh, here we go. Down is. the rabbit hole news. Aaron and Tommy. Hey, you know, I saw down the rabbit hole news did a, a live stream with Reese today. I saw that too. Did you see that? I can't, I didn't I watch did. the whole thing, but um, I was watching it when the, when the text message came in of Danny's mug shot. Um, so I'll have to watch that later. Always good to see a rabbit. Um, all right, guys, we're going to, we, it, it is a really good picture. <laughs> uh, we are going to cut it there for now, guys. Stay tuned. Much more to come this evening, actually. But uh, for now, thanks for hanging out and with the us. The next time I come and back on, he's probably going to have just been stomped out like a brush fire. So we'll have something, we'll have something a lot of fun to, to talk about when I come on the next time. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk Sorry. to you soon. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!